points of no return. One morning, James's driver came early to the sheds. There's a change of plan, James, he said. We're to take the stopping passenger train today, not the goods train, so we must be ready half an hour earlier. James was glad to be taking coaches rather than trucks, but he was not so pleased about the extra hurry. Gordon and Henry were in the shed too. It would be nice to have a branch line to myself, remarked James wistfully. You, explained the others in one voice. Why not, demanded James. At least I'd know where my next load was coming from. Ah, said Gordon knowingly. But what about the trucks? Gordon hated trucks and had once run off a turntable to avoid pulling them. And then there's the shunting, put in Henry. You'd have to do it on your own, you know. Well, James hesitated. He had to admit that shunting was what he liked least. Perhaps Donald and Douglas would do it for me, he began. Or perhaps not, he finished lamely, seeing the pitying looks of the others. Anyway, branch lines aren't so bad. I can tell why you don't like them, Gordon. I like my freedom, said Gordon. I need a good run for my wheels. Scope to use my talents you wouldn't understand, little James, he said grandly. Pa! scoffed James. You only say that because you were once turned onto Edward's branch line by mistake. Gordon closed his eyes. His branch line incident was not one he wished to remember. Soon, James's driver and fireman came for him. James bustled away importantly, and Henry and Gordon exchanged knowing grins. When he passed Edward's station, James told Edward how much he would like a branch line. You can come and help me on my branch line any time, smiled Edward. With Boko away, I've been worked off my wheels just lately. James sighed as he set off again. The rest of his journey was uneventful. James kept good time and was feeling quite pleased with himself as he set off for home once more. At the workstation, he met Gordon. Found any good branch lines? Gordon chuckled. James took no notice. Just you wait, he muttered. I'll show you. James came cautiously down Gordon's Hill because he knew he had to stop at Edward's station, which lay near the bottom. It was lucky he did because just before they reached the platform, James noticed that the points were directing them into the branch platform instead of the main one. Stop, he whistled, and his driver put on the brakes. James was not going too fast. Suddenly... He realised that the platform ended with buffers. Help! He gasped and shut his eyes. When the crash didn't come, he opened them again and found that he had stopped with a few inches to spare. All right, James, said the fireman. I'll ask the signalman to put us back on the proper line. I won't be long. The signalman had reset the points behind James. As the rules said, but when he tried to change them to let James out, he found he couldn't. He was most apologetic. The lock must have jammed, he said. I'm afraid James will have to stay where he is. No, hang on. He can't. Edward needs to use that platform in a quarter of an hour. We'll have to put James out of the way in the goods yard. James was not pleased, and neither were his passengers. Bertie came to take them to their proper stations, but James stood in the siding with nothing to do for the rest of the day. That evening, Sir Topham Hatt came to see him. I'm sorry, James, he said. But mending those points is going to take longer than I thought. Meanwhile, Edward needs help, and since you, er, uh, can't escape, you may as well do something useful. Yes, sir, agreed James. At first, James quite enjoyed it, but as time went on, knowing exactly what he had to do, and when it became rather dull, in fact, he was delighted when the points at last were mended, and Sir Topham Hatt said that he can go back to the big station. It was late when he reached it. Gordon opened a sleepy eye. Hello, he said. You've sorted out Edward's branch line for him. That's good. James did not answer. He did not go so far as Gordon in thinking that branch lines were vulgar. But he did agree with him on the subject of freedom.